know, and clear your clutter inside and out, we're talking about end of life paperwork. Would loved ones be able to find your important documents if you were to die tomorrow? Do you have all your passwords easily accessible so people can access online accounts? Have you arranged what will happen to your sensitive papers, such as client information or personal data? Do you have a will and a power of attorney? Learn how to organize paperwork as we begin our month focusing on going with grace. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired my, by my father a few years ago. My brother and I met with his an accountant, an attorney, and my parents aren't super rich. And I think that there's a misconception out there that you have to be really rich to have a will, and that's not the case. I read a recent article in the Daily Mail, and I believe this was an Australian. I don't know Australian law, obviously. I don't know law. Now a little bit, right, what I've learned from law and order. Anyway, it was a young woman. She was married. She was pregnant. And her husband died, and he didn't have a will. So they lost the house, or they're about to buy a house, or something happened, because this story was how she bought the only house that she could afford, which was just junk. I mean, it needed all this work done. And so the story was about how the community came together to do all the repairs that were needed and create a home for her and her child. But because her husband didn't have a will, they lost their house. And so that's why it's really important. I mentioned in another podcast, again, bringing it up because she's so famous, Aretha Franklin didn't have a will. Now, again, they think they found a handwritten will in the couch. But there's all this contesting of the will. There's all this money. She didn't have checks cash. It was just a hot mess. Her paperwork obviously wasn't organized well at all. Just because you're not wealthy or you're middle class, or even if you don't have a lot of money. My husband told me this story when his grandmother said, I don't want you fighting over the small stuff whatever that I'm going to leave behind. And so it wasn't anything that has sentimental value, is my understanding. But he talked about how the, all the relatives fought over the stuff. If you've outlined that, then there's a non-issue. I also have to give my Aunt Sue Farnsworth a shout out. She is a retired estate attorney and has helped me as I focus my business. I refocused it because after this conversation with my father, seeing friends, I'm now 50, seeing friends dying and not having wills and seeing the suffering of people left behind. Aunt Sue was very helpful with me creating lists and doing things to be able to help people with end of life planning and organization. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to Aunt Sue. Another reason, when I was living in Los Angeles, I first moved to Los Angeles and was a quote unquote personal assistant for a very short time for this guy. And I'll never forget, I walked into the accountant's office with a paper bag full of receipts and the organizer in me is just cringing, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm showing up with unorganized receipts. Who does this? And I remember apologizing to the accountant. I mean, it wasn't even my stuff and I was embarrassed. And she was like, oh, don't even worry about it because I'm getting paid. And I thought to myself, she's probably hiring some high school kid for 10 bucks an hour, even if it was 20 years ago or whatever, to organize these receipts and charging her accountant's rate. And I thought, well, why not? You have a business to run and you have been given a hot mess and you have to spend all your time organizing. Every year I give my accountant an organized spreadsheet. I have folders organized, so God forbid, I hope I'm never audited. I'm not going to pay to have someone else organize my paperwork. So if you're organized, you could go to an attorney and say, okay, I have everything organized, drop the will. I'm going to assume that it will save you money. If you're not going to go to an attorney, then it's going to be easier for 
your errors to find everything that you need. Or if you use something like LegalZoom, again, you'll have that good balance of having all your paperwork in one area. In February 2017, AARP had an article, haven't done a will yet. And in this article, they said that the top two reasons people hadn't done estate planning or failed to have a will is 47% said they hadn't gotten around to it, right? Because we think that we're going to live forever. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to start doing this because I thought people think that. And then someone else has to clean up the mess. And instead of people being able to grieve, they're worrying about finding all this information. And the other 29% felt that they didn't have enough assets to leave to anyone. And I mentioned that at the beginning. It doesn't matter. You have something. And if it's important or value to you, you want to be able to designate who you want to leave that to. Again, I'm, I don't want the government to have my stuff. I've worked hard. I want to have it save cats or have my nieces and nephew get some value out of it. This same article found that only four in 10 American adults have a will, will or living trust. Now, 81% of those aged 72 or older and 58% of boomers aged 53 to 71 do. So as you get older, people are like, oh, get near the end. But again, I'm 50 and I've already seen more friends than I've wanted to see pass. So I'm gonna encourage you to do that. In August 2017, NPR did a little show, many avoid end of life care planning study finds. Even though advanced directives have been promoted by health professionals for nearly 50 years, which that really shocked me, I was surprised that they've been promoting that long, only about a third of US adults have them. People with chronic illnesses were only slightly more likely than healthy individuals to put their wishes down on paper. Of the nearly 800,000 surveyed, 37% completed some kind of advanced directive. Of those, 29% completed living wills, 33% filed healthcare proxies, and 32% remained undefined, meaning the type of advanced directive wasn't specified or was combined. People older than age 65 were significantly more likely to complete any type of advanced directive than younger ones. 46% of older people versus 32% of those who were younger. But the difference between people who were healthy and those who were sick when they filled out the directive was much smaller, 33% compared to 38%. And I just share those statistics, you're not alone. Again, we never know when our numbers call. And this topic's important to me because when you've accepted death, you can live your life fully. This is why I have concentrated my business now on life coaching and end of life planning and organization. Because I want people reawakening their brilliance. I want people following their passions. And the biggest fear for just about all of us is death. We know it's gonna happen. I believe in reincarnation, although I'm tweaking that with all the quantum physics things that I'm reading about everything going on simultaneously. But once we've accepted death, we can live our life fully. And so having these conversations and my hope also with this month's episode and the work that I do is to open up conversations. If you're caring for someone that's elderly, I have had friends that they haven't known anything and their parents have passed and it's, and it's added more stress to their grief. And it's a subject that sometimes is avoided a lot. My father, it appears from just what I read among friends, is in the minority about having these conversations with us. I'm so grateful though, because again, we are going to have, we will be able to spend our time grieving instead of finding out all this stuff and where it's located. Another thing that's great about having these conversations is that you can make sure nothing's missing. When we had the initial conversation with my father, we're like, well, what does mom want to do with social media? What about anything online? That's something that you all need to address. So it allows you to ask questions, get clarification, and make sure you have everything covered. This when you prepare for death, you can live your life fully. 
Where is all that information to your online assets and would people know how to find it? What do you want people to remember about you? If you were to die suddenly, who would take care of your pets? Julie Caraccio can support you in end of life planning and organization. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn more. Today we're going to talk about paperwork. This is by no means a comprehensive list. I would I don't have enough time to do podcasts on this. It'd be hours and hours. So this is to get you thinking, to get you started, to get you moving in the right direction. These are different categories that you might want to consider. Just a few examples. Again, this is what I view the start of the conversation. So some of the areas where you might have paperwork. Legal. So that's going to include obviously your will, your power of attorney, and things like certificates and trusts. You may end up setting up a trust in addition to your will. My understanding, I think I read somewhere that Aretha Franklin had a child that was disabled or autistic or something like that and had set up a trust for that child. Health. That could include living wills, end of life care, and I really encourage you to think that through. There is a great documentary on HBO. I have the resource on my website, and it's about different ways to die. I think Tony's probably going to choose a space option. I have no idea how much that costs, and I thought the green burial looked kind of cool. What is your, and how do you want your physician orders for life-sustaining treatment? That's called a pulse document, P-O-L-S-T. I don't want to suffer and suffer. Pull the plug when we're ready. So those are the type of health documents you'll have. Finances, a big one, because you're gonna have to get all that taken care of. Bank accounts, insurance, monthly expenses. What if you have stocks and bonds and get a monthly deposit from them? You're gonna have to figure all that out. Pets, you listened for a while, you knew that this was coming, but I see so many pets that the owners don't have a plan for, and so they're scrambling and they're left at the shelter or they're just thrown outside or they're left to die. So I'm really gonna encourage you, think about your pets when doing your planning. Funds for them, how they'll be distributed, who is gonna take care of them, create a care plan. It's like what I do when we have the cats that are come. She gets a very detailed document for all the cats about what they need encourage you to have that you someone that you call immediately upon your death and knows okay i'm the first line of defense taking care of the animals and then we have a longer term plan coming sensitive paperwork because you might not want everyone to see certain things it might include adoption papers client information passwords so you might need to designate a separate person maybe you have a power attorney you say okay my sister's in charge of my sensitive papers your ceremony include the clothes you'd like to wear, the budget, the place, any prearranged costs. One thing that my grandmother did that was amazing was she had that all planned out. I believe she had written her obituary, and I'm definitely writing my obituary. I want it to be funny. I want to have some aw moments, I guess, but I really want people to enjoy themselves. When I see these funny obituaries passed along, I just kind of laugh and think, ah, oh, what a cool person. I'm sorry I didn't know them. And it's interesting how much those get passed around. People want to see how the funny and the humor, it's not all about all the accomplishments and the material wealth and all that. So that might be something that you choose to do and keep it with all your ceremony papers and how you want to exit the world. Business, if you own a business, a transition strategy, might be part of the paperwork. You're ending, but who's gonna take over? Or is it gonna be sold? All those types of things to consider. You might have titles and deeds, if you have a physical location, your bank accounts, how you pay bills. Have all of that information. These are just certain things, paperwork that you might need. Now again, if you don't have a business, ignore that part. 
but you might have a lot of paper for your pets because you've got lots of things. You have a pet that's medically ill, so you need to come up with a plan and say, okay, I'm going to set aside $10,000. I think that that'll pay for food and everything. I found someone to care for them. Or I know a lot of pet rescues have now set up programs where if you pay them, they will make sure we will take care of your pet to the end of your life. Those are categories of papers to start with. So the next part I want to talk about is how are you going to organize? Organize how it makes sense to you. I think that's the best advice that I can, but we all think differently. The example that I like to use is I file people in my phone by first name. Most people do that by last name, but just whatever reason, it works for my brain better. So let's begin with how it makes sense to you because you're the one probably going to, even if the attorney has a copy, you're the one going to be updating this and keeping track of that. Maybe you have a big binder. Estate planning, boom, big old sign on the binder. There are online portal options. Maybe you're a techie and you're like, you know what? I'm keeping this all organized online. It's gonna be really easy to update. That's an option. You could have an accordion file. So you have estate planning, you have health papers in one, you have end of life ceremony in one, you have pets in one. Just keeping all that organized, but that you can open and easily have categories separated out. Or you simply have files in a filing cabinet. You have the hanging folder that says estate planning with all the folders of your paper. Organize by category. Again, simplify this process for the people you're leaving behind and make it easy for them. I'm gonna encourage you to have an index, especially because we all think differently, kind of a roadmap. Okay, here are my papers and here's what's included and, or a little guideline that has all of the information that they need so they can easily understand. Or you, for example, if you've been legal, okay, our safety deposit box is at this bank, here's the password, here's all the information you need to know. You're gonna to wanna to have this paperwork organized and easy to access because you just can't walk in the bank. There's a process to get a safety deposit box and you wanna make sure you understand what that is and have all that in line to make it easier on your heirs. Don't forget to label. Okay guys, I've been doing this for a while. People have these labels like, what, what? Can't read it, so make sure that's clear. If you're gonna invest in a P-Touch, now is the time. Just make it easy for everyone to read. And then finally, you're going to want to make sure your lawyer, power of attorney, sister, wife, sibling, whoever the important people are, that they know where they can find your important papers. You have an online portal. Okay, everything's here. Name, here's the link, here's the login, and here's the password. It's in drawer number two of the file. Have all that they know where they can access it. And I encourage you in general that you have a copy. Perhaps keep a copy in your safe. Let's know that if you have a safe, what's the combination? Keep it in the safe, keep it in a deposit box, give a copy to the power attorney. I would encourage you to definitely with your power of attorney, if there's someone else that you really trust, I'd encourage you to make sure they have a copy as well. Take actions from today's podcast. Determine categories of important paperwork. Gather all your important documents. Create a system to organize your paperwork. Have an index for all your records. Label clearly. Tell people where your important documents are located and how to access. Provide copies for your power of attorney or other important people. On our next episode, we're talking about self-care around death and dying. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, Please rate, review, and share us.